So in archery, we have a few different pivot points that we rotate around, even if you're shooting the linear shot cycle or an angular shot cycle like the KSL shot cycle. Regardless, there are hinge points or pivot points on the body, like the spine that you rotate around or the shoulder as it pivots, things like that. And I'm gonna show you how to focus on slightly different pivot points from time to time within the shot. And I'm gonna show you how just thinking about a slightly different pivot point that most people don't think about can clean up your release dramatically. Excuse the mess behind me. I'm still in process of organizing and going through all of my archery gear and tools to put them in the cabinets behind me. Again, this is, you know, a new studio that I just built and finished up. So I'm still in the process of putting everything together because uh, I have a whole lot of stuff and I need to find its place so that way it always gets put back in its place before I move forward. So I'm sorry that it's a little bit messy, but uh, it will get better over time. So thanks for your patience there. Yeah, like I said there in the intro, talking about pivot points and hinge points. I'm gonna to explain to you what I mean by pivot points and hinge points. For example, if you were to use like a joint, a joint space is what your finger pivots on. That is the pivot point right there, if that makes any sense. Or each of these individual digits and spots there that you hinge and pivot around and do the actual movement. So it would be like the wrist being the pivot point and the hand being the movement point like this. That's what I'm talking about, that being the rotational point, the central point that everything rotates around or hinges around. And yes, I said, even if you shoot the linear shot cycle or any type of shooting style out there, regardless of the actual bow you shoot or the actual form you shoot, there are natural pivot points or rotational points that you do move around. For example, if I were to be using my spine as the pivot point, you know, you rotate around, you pull and draw around, you know, the spine being the rotational axis, the rotational point. The reason that I'm actually doing this video is to actually help you clean up your release. That's the main goal of this video, but there are different pivot points and hinge points that you do use throughout the different cycles within the shot. So as I lift the bow and I go to rotate, I'm definitely using the spine more as my rotational axis point. And then as I go to draw, it starts to shift from the spine being the rotation point to almost the shoulder being the rotation point at a certain point in time, especially towards the end of the draw cycle, I start to use the shoulder as the pivot point. But then once I'm at full draw, I switch to an entirely different spot to pivot around or hinge around. And what it does is it dramatically cleans up my release. So you can think about slightly different things the way you've been doing it, and that's totally fine. Whether you do pivot around a specific point or you don't in space, you know, that's up to you. And I'm, I'm cool with however people like to shoot. But again, I wanna clean up your release and I'm gonna show you how here now. You know, some people as they're releasing, from time to time, they'll have a flyaway release. You know, like a good pluck or uh, some sort of outward motion like this. That's obviously exaggerated. People usually have this type of release where you can see how it just kind of comes away from my face as I do the motion. And it's not necessarily as tight and compact as super high level archers are, such as like this. That's a lot more cleaner and a lot more smooth fluid of a release style where the hand doesn't fly away from the face. And what am I doing there and how do I make that happen as opposed to this happen? It's a slight change of pivot, okay? So if I were to show you, I'm at full draw, pretending to anchor. This also works for barebow, it's all the same. You know, people in barebow can have this type of release where it flies away, or they can have a very tight, compact release. Barebow recurve, doesn't matter, it's all the same. So when you think about a pivot point, if I were to pretend to come to full draw, lock this unit in one piece. So the relationship between the forearm and the upper arm and the wrist and the hand, all of that being locked in place and not changing. If I were to use the spine as the pivot point and think about my spine being the rotational axis of this unit, my hand would do this. See how it opens up and flies away. 
dramatically and quite largely if I'm using the spine as the pivot point, right? Now, if I think about the shoulder being the pivot point, and that is my rotational axis, it cleans it up. It feels a little bit better. And I'm trying to think about the shoulder being the pivot point that the hand rotates around, or this whole unit rather rotates around. Now, the trick that I want to show you that is very interesting, and I don't, I don't know where I found this, don't know kind of how I stumbled upon it. I think it was just through my own shooting style and my own internal analysis on how it feels to have a clean, clean release and how to make it happen time after time. So now, what I do and what I recommend is when you come to full draw, you then can use your anchor point as the pivot point. Maybe where the, the, the top of the knuckle is buried in against your jaw. Maybe where your index finger is touching your canine tooth when you're shooting bare bow. Maybe this knuckle being against the cheekbone. Maybe the string being in contact against your face like under your chin. That point could also be your pivot point. Any one of those, but somewhere on the face. If you think of that being the pivot point, and now instead of, again, really quick, the spine, the shoulder, now use the anchor point as the pivot point. And you can see that anchor point being the pivot point moving around and behind me, it cleans up that release dramatically, right? So again, this is the anchor being the pivot point. Super clean, super tight against the face. Anchor being the pivot point. Now again, for effect, spine being the pivot point, shoulder being the pivot point, and anchor being the pivot point. I'll do it this way so you can see it again too. <clears throat> spine, shoulder, and anchor point. Very different. It's, it's very subtle. Small change, small perception shift. Not even really that much of a form change. Just trying to think about where do we rotate around and then the forces that you exert into the bow to make the clicker click, the forces that you pull with, push with, whatever, all the same, don't change those at all. All I'm encouraging you to try to experience and try to experiment with is don't use your spine as the pivot point or the shoulder, use the anchor, whether that be the knuckle or the string on your face. Doesn't matter what you use somewhere in that area, but use that as that focal point to rotate around as the shot breaks, as you're pulling through the clicker, as you are doing your final stages of the aim. If you're in bare bow, up really high and forward, hinge on the face, it's very tight and compact this way, like this, as opposed to, again, the back or the shoulder. It's just not as clean as that face being that hinge point, that pivot point that you rotate around, that you pull from. Doesn't matter what it is. You know, I don't know about linear style, but I think still pulling from the face, it's gonna be a lot more compact and tight against the face and prevent those flyaways from happening. So I just wanted to make a really quick video to kind of break it down for you, to help you clean up your release a little bit at home, because it's a struggle for many people. They try to figure out what's going on. Why does my hand fly away from the face all the time? And I can't tell you how many people in person that I've coached that I've just said, okay, let's try this, imagine this, and immediately their release cleans up and it makes a massive difference. So I just wanted to share that really quick with you. And if you wouldn't mind, if you haven't yet, if you're new here, please do hit the subscription button and the notification bell. Uh, it really helps this channel out. I'm working on uh, uploading very regularly every Thursday and Saturday and some other videos interjected in between every so often, of course. And I'm really just working to create free content, good free content for people out there to absorb because I want to educate people and I really want to bring more knowledge to the masses because this didn't exist when I was a kid growing up and I had no idea what I was doing. Completely random, completely self-taught and just shooting some arrows, flinging arrows in the backyard for lack of better terms. So, you know, I'm just trying to make a great resource for all of you at home to enjoy. So consider checking out the links in the description below on how to support this channel because again, I'm producing this for free for you all to enjoy and I'm really trying to help the archery community out as a whole. So thank you very much, and I uh, really hope this helps. Really just sit there and try to pivot around the face. Use the face or the anchor or your string as your pivot point and see what happens to your release. Post in the comments below if you are doing that or if you have tried that and how it worked out for you because I'd be interested to see how many people this helps out. So take care.